Somebody on my last uh, video posted a comment asking for a tutorial on how I enhanced that Dragon Ball clip uh, to 4K 60 frames a second, and I figured that that process was easy enough. I could show you how to do it, no problem. It should only take a few minutes. Um, so I wanted, I already uh, prepared some clips um, that I did uh, prior to recording this video. Um, so just to show you as an example, I've got uh, just a four second clip here from the opening credits of Dragon Ball Z. I'll show you briefly. So it's just a clip, only four seconds long. And the original file size, or uh, video size is 1080p. Um, it's 9.3 megabytes. So when you enhance the uh, video file, um, it takes quite a lot uh, time. Um, just that four second video took a few minutes and uh, obviously taking it to 4K more than doubled the file size. So it went from 9.3 megabytes to 24.5 megabytes. So, and here I'll show you again. Let's see here. So that's just uh, what it looks like at the 1080p video and then Now my monitor is actually only 1080p, so I, you know, it's difficult to tell the difference. But you may be able to notice that the there's less um, artifacting on the for compression. There's less aliasing in some of the details. Um, so the software that I use uh, is called Topaz Video Enhance AI, and um, it looks like this. So essentially, you just drag your video clip in there, and for a 1080p video, it defaults to um, Upscaling it to 200%, uh, 200% which for 1080p, um, that doubles the resolution on both the Y and the X axis, so that actually makes it to 4K. Um, and, but you can also just hit the uh, 4K preset. Um, and then for the AI models, there's four different kinds. So I just use the default one, Gaia HQ. Um, and if you hover over the options, it gives you um, suggestions for how to use these um, AI models. So I'll just hover over them briefly. So okay. So, anyways, um, this is the software I use. I just use the default one, and for that clip that I posted, that four four and a half minute clip, um, I just use the 4K uh, preset. Um, and um, you want to make sure when you use this software that you have. Um, an NVIDIA graphics card. Um, it uses NVIDIA graphics cards uh, for hardware acceleration on the processing. So you have the option of using your CPU, but it would take quite a bit longer. I have an RTX 2070. Um, for enhancing videos to 4K, it takes about two seconds to render a single frame. So you actually want to have something quite a bit more powerful than what I've got if you want it to be any decent timing at all. Enhancing a standard definition clip to 1080p uh, usually can do about three frames a second. So this one, it's one second for, or one frame per two seconds. So uh, taking it to 4K, so it takes quite a long time. It took about, uh, I think, six hours to render that um, Dragon Ball clip. That was only four and a half minutes long. Um, if you, and uh, it only uses NVIDIA graphics cards if you have an AMD um, graphics card, it's not going to be able to utilize that, unfortunately. Anyways, I'm not going to um, run a preview because when I start a preview, it takes up my GPU power, and it. this is uh, actually my third or fourth time trying to record this video because uh, every time I'd try to show a preview, it would uh, corrupt the video um, because it would hog up all the GPU resources. But anyways, I can just show you. It's 117 frames, and... Um, Actually, let me open that back up again. And then I'll go ahead and put in the 60 FPS mode. So um, I want to emphasize it's important to render it to a higher resolution first. And then from that higher resolution footage, then increase the frame rate. If you increase the frame rate of the uh, lower resolution footage and then try to increase the resolution, like I said, it, it takes two seconds to render a single frame. So if you double or triple your frame rate, it's going to take double or triple the time. To enhance the video, and uh, the increase in the frame rate um, takes significantly less time than it does to increase the resolution. So, 
Um, one thing to notice, so um, 117 frames was what the original clip was. And this is actually more than double. Um, it went to 289. That's because the original clip um, is 24 seconds long. Or sorry, not 24 seconds, what am I thinking? It's 24 frames per second. And so we're increasing it to 60 frames a second, which is almost triple. Um, now, when you have lower frame rate footage like that, the um, and frame interpolation is actually a lower quality, I think, um, because it's having to interpolate more frames. And um, I can show you what the difference looks like here. So here you have like a, a solid frame and then, so here, I'll show you right here. So this is what like a, the normal frame would look like. And then if we skip ahead, you can see how the details kind of break up in his eyes and the details around his eyes. And then you go to the next frame and it's solid again. And then you go to the next frame and it's broken up again. And then it goes back to a more solid frame. So it's it's drawing frames that are halfway in between uh, it, because it's interpolating the data. So um, when it's in full motion, it's not quite as no noticeable. Um, and here, I hope you can see this. I tried recording this too before, trying to show the details in the cape, and it the footage didn't pick up. It started to corrupt because the pros the uh, preview was taking up GPU power. So hopefully you can see this. But here you have like a solid image of the cape. And if I click, go to the next frame, you can see Hopefully you can see that it's starting to, you know, the details are starting to break up because it's interpolating it into the next frame. It's broken up even more there. And then it starts to reform a solid image again. And then it goes to the next solid frame there. So anyways, but uh, when it's in full motion, it's not quite as bothersome. I think I prefer having the uh, 60 frames a second with the interpolated frames. I think that's a better uh, quality, even with the, you know, the broken up frames in between um, than just having their standard 24 frames a second. So just to reiterate, so you start with your original clip, then you enhance it to 4K, then you increase the frame rate. And then after that, you can see that the file sizes, they progressively get larger um, the more you process and enhance it. So the original clip was 9.3 megabytes. You enhance it to 4K to 24.5 megabytes. And then after adding, uh, increasing it to 60 frames a second, it went to 34.1 megabytes. And so, um, I didn't, let me show you how you, what I used to increase the frame rate. So I used a program called me GUI and there's this one click option. So I would put the, I would open up the, uh, 4k, the clip 4k, and then I would just hit go and it's going to automatically take it to 60 frames a second or 59.94 but whatever it rounds up to 60 and then it spits out the 60 frames a second file. And then, so now you're stuck with a file that's more, uh, more than triple the original file size. So, um, I like to compress it afterward using handbrake and set my own preset here. I'm not going to load the 4k frames because the 4k footage, because that takes a lot longer to load. But just to show you as an example, I have my own preset here. For the video settings, I put the constant quality RF slider to 18, and I use the frame rate setting as same as source. Um, I use 18 because it um, compresses the file size to a much more reasonable file size. So it went back from 34.1 megabytes down to 12.8 megabytes. So I cut it less than half um, to the the, the uh, previous file size. So, and then, but I put it at 18 because um, it's still going to be pretty much lossless quality compression. Whenever you compress a video, it's never actually going to be lossless, but, um, it just means that, um, it's compressing it very lightly. So you won't be able to tell a difference, but the big impact is going to be on the file sizes. So you have a video that's the same quality as the previous one, but at a lesser file size. So it takes up, some, takes up less space. Um, and I'll show you, um, where to get the softwares that I use. So first that I mentioned was Topaz. So you're going to go to topazlabs.com. Um, they do have a free trial that's good for 30 days, but here you want to go products, video enhance, and it's actually 200 bucks or, well, and apparently that's 
they're saying that it's on sale. It's been on sale since since I've got it, so I don't know when that sale's supposed to end, but apparently it could be as much as $300, so it ain't cheap, for sure, but it'd be worth it if you have a lot of footage that you want to enhance. Um, me, GUI, um, that came from somebody else. Um, I want to give them credit, so um, his name is Irex, I believe. Me, GUI, 30 FPS to 60 FPS. So, Irex. I got this from him. I used his tutorial, so I'm going to link his video uh, in my description. And in his description of his video, he has the link to download um, the software, his installer that he made. And then, uh, and then I just use Handbrake to compress the video. But yeah, that's all I do. It's a pretty simple process. The computer does all the work um, and takes all the time, so um, I just let it run overnight most of the time. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it.